Hi, good afternoon, Meg here. Um, this is a really quick tutorial about getting up and running with Google Classroom. As the year goes on, I'll post a couple more videos about um, doing some other cool stuff with Google Classroom, but today we're just gonna talk about getting started and it's simply adding some assignments to it and adding students. So to get started, first we're gonna stop, start by going to classroom.google.com. Um, once you're there, you should see a screen that looks really similar to this. You may also see a screen where on the right-hand side, it will ask you to choose if you are a student or a teacher. You're a teacher, so make sure you pick teacher from there. Um, and then you'll see this screen. So from here, it gives you this nice visual clue up here to go ahead and this is where you're going to cl click to create your first class. So I'm going to click this plus sign right there. And then I can either join a class or create a class. So joining a class would be a function that you would use it for a co-teaching situation or um, if you already knew that a class exists that you just want to be a part of. But for our purposes for this video, we're going to create a new class. So go ahead and hit create class. So I teach ELA, so I'm going to call this class ELA Somerville. Um, you can put a section if you want, like say you have several sections of the same class. Um, you and you want them to stay separate. You can put a section here. I don't. I can, I don't care if all my kids hang out together. Um, then you can put a subject, and I'm just going to put ELA. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Give it a second. All right. From here, I have. I'm going to close down their navigation because I got it. Um, from here, I you can see I have my new class now. It automatically comes up with this little theme up here. So this flashlight guy or whatever. If you want to um, have a new theme, you can go ahead and hit here, select new theme, and we can have something else. I'm going to go with this yarn one, select class name, and it'll change it for you. Now first we're going to talk about adding students. So to add students, you're going to go to students, um, and then to invite students, um, you're actually going to have them navigate to classroom.google.com and then they're going to get the option to join a class and to join a class you're going to have them click in this code that exists right here class code so in this case it'd be wvkg4av so students would go to classroom.google.com they'd hit that plus sign instead of hitting create class which they won't have the option to do they'll click join class and then they'll add in that class code right there now you'll notice some options under class code. You can reset it. Say you want to have a different class code for whatever reason you want new students to be using something different. And you can also dis disable it. So say after Labor Day, you don't want students to be able to join your class anymore. You can turn it off and then you don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's kind of how you get students into your class. If you needed to add another teacher into your class, you're going to go to About and then Invite Teacher. And you can invite that teacher by email. So whatever their at euclidschools.org email is the one that you're going to be looking at. We're going to hop back over to the, stream, to the stream now that we have teachers and students in our class, and we're going to talk about adding content to your class. Now, it's important to note that unlike other LMS, Google Classroom isn't really a place where you can go and build the stuff in a Google Classroom. More than anything, you're going to be using Google Classroom to link to other things. We all know that it's super annoying when you try to get a student to type in a URL because it takes up half of your class because, you know, they don't pluralize something that needs it, they can't spell, whatever the case may be. So Google Classroom is a great alternative to that because then they can just go into their Google Classroom. They're already signed in with their Google accounts when they get on a Chromebook. So they're halfway there from there. Um, and then it just helps that they can have the link right there for them. You can give them a Google Drive document, anything that you need to get give to the kids without having to like painstakingly have them type in a URL. So to add stuff to our Google Classroom, we're gonna use this plus sign in the bottom. So the first one on the top is reuse an old post, which isn't really applicable to us because this is a brand new class. The next one is create a question. Here you can post a question and your students can respond to it. And you'll notice, don't care, you'll notice that here's the question, any instructions if, option, if you need them. You can have a due date for that, and then you can monitor how your students are doing at responding. Here you've got, you can decide if you want it to be a short answer or multiple choice. Maybe you want to just do a really quick, like, multiple choice question about something just to get a read of the room. You can decide if students can reply to one another. I'm going to turn that off. Um, sometimes I just don't want my students talking about each other's answers. I just want them to answer the questions to themselves. And then you can decide if a student can edit their answer once they've submitted it. You can also have these options to add a file, to add something from Google Drive, 
to add a YouTube video or to add a link. So you can have, maybe you want the students to go to a link, read something really fast, and then answer this question. You can put that in the instructions if that's what you want them to do. Then you can ask the question and the students will have a chance to respond. Now, creating an assignment um, looks really similar, except there, instead of ask a question, there's a title. So again, you have the option to add a file, a Google Drive document, you can have the, uh, add a YouTube video, you can attach a link, um, you have a due date, you have a topic, all that kind of stuff still exists in here. And you can just give them an assignment with like, say, my term paper, I can give them some instructions, maybe I attach a template to them and they can um, interact with it through Google Classroom. And then the last thing is to add an announcement. An announcement is basically, you're just telling your kids stuff. They're not interacting with us at all. There's no due date, nothing. You are just strictly giving them information. And you can do that by just typing in your information here, like here is some info. Or we can add a, a document, a Google Drive item, um, a YouTube video, or attach a link. I'm gonna post that one so they have some info so you can see. Now when those posts come up, they come up with the newest one on top. So as you add more stuff, the other stuff gets pushed down as you keep going, okay? So that is basically a super quick rundown of Google Classroom. Um, like I said, as the year goes on, I'll start highlighting some other ways that you can use Google Classroom within your classroom to make your life a little bit easier. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at msomerville at euclidschools.org. Have a great day.